Heal Yourself with Sarah Dawkins, episode 28 with Natasha Sharma. Natasha Sharma is a clinical hypnotherapist, author, speaker, mentor, and hypnobirthing instructor based in Mumbai, India. Her mission is to normalize conversations about death. Natasha's expertise is in using somatic expressions to heal and guide people to find the root cause of physical injuries and disease. And Natasha was one of the guest speakers at my recent Heal Yourself live online summit. So welcome, Natasha. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. Oh, it's great that you can join me. Thank you. Thank you for now, having me. Now, I believe you have healed something in your own life as well. Would you like to share? To be very fair, Sarah, the healing journey, as you know, is an ongoing um, thing of self-awareness, of constantly monitoring your thoughts. It all starts with your thoughts and your feelings. So I'm very, very cognizant of, you know, the, the mind, body, soul connection to physical diseases. So I do continuously monitor myself. Um, and like I said, it's an ongoing experience. But uh, specifically, I'll talk about when I um, had polycystic um, ovarian thingy, Maji, <laughs> whatever, depending on which country you're in, syndrome or disease. So um, this was about, I guess, about 10 odd years ago. And um, I had very irregular periods and uh, quite painful ones. And I even had that endro, that endometritis, where the ovarian is. Yes, that one. Um, so as you can tell, I preferred the feelings rather than the names of these things. Um, but anyway, so I, I, so I went to the doctor and I got diagnosed with this and she gave me this really, um, heavy course of, uh, medicine to take. And I'm quite reticent about medicine uh, simply because I believe, I don't believe that one pill for any one disease can cure everyone. Like it really is sort of like a photocopy treatment for, for the fact that each of us are unique and we're built differently. So I don't believe that a single blister pack on average applies to everybody. So yeah. I take medicine very, very um, carefully and only when absolutely needed. So, and my doctor's really good that way. She doesn't over prescribe. And, uh, but here the, there was this thing that I had to take. And so when I went into the, um, into the mind, body, soul connection, the metaphysical reason behind this uh, syndrome, I realized that it is, it's common and it is um, on the rise it's it's not rare at all and the reason is because um when there's an imbalance with, within you between your masculine energy and your feminine energy that's what leads to this basically um and in today's world where women and men everybody is basically sort of geared towards doing 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 um women are it's one of the fallouts of the feminism movement of where in instead of the feminism movement being about uh garnering our own strength it's more become trying to match up with the men so there's a, a, an imbalance with the masculine energy increases now and that is what leads to this and so i was like oh okay so what I started, so then what happened was I was going on vacation and I decided that I was going to be drinking a lot of wine. And so I was like, uh, I don't think I should take this medicine now. So I'll just take it when I come back. Oh, and by the way, they were really expensive, these medications. Anyway, I bought the course, but I didn't start taking it. I thought I'll come back and take it. And while I was on vacation, I made sure that I put on makeup, which I normally do. I do not like putting makeup on. But uh, I put makeup on every day. I wore dresses, long skirts, flowy, sort of like anything that was sort of making me feel very delicate and um, feminine. And I did a lot of dancing, um, you know, just music on and just da slow dancing, not like hectic um, 
uh, bopping. <laughs> so uh, that's what I did. And when I came back, I actually went back to my doctor first and they were gone. So that yeah. medicine, I gave it back to her. I said, give it to a poor person. Fabulous. <laughs> and, and metaphysics is so interesting, isn't it? I know. I love it. I really, I want to dig further into metaphysics because there's so much we can learn. And, and it is that, that mind-body connection, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Always. Absolutely. That's why when I was speaking on your summit and the listeners can, you know, go and catch the replay, um, that it's one of the preemptive, even though I talk about death because it's a, a, it is a topic that we all need to talk about. Yeah. But if you have an underlying fear of death, um, and you and I have spoken about this before as well, that, that, that whole thing affects your respiratory system. It depends on how each person processes it. But... That's one of the reasons, that's another reason that you really should get over your fear of your own death if you have it or uh, the uh, fear of losing your loved ones because everyone's going to die, you know. So yeah. when you figure out the mind-body connection, then you see none of our conversations actually, just to switch tracks here, none of our conversations actually mean that any of us are going to live forever. We yeah. all have to die. We just don't know when and how. The point is, it doesn't need to be a long, drawn out, painful illness. Um, that much we have control over if we monitor the metaphysical um, fallouts of any thought or emotion, you know. Yeah, and and we we have the choice of our thoughts as well, don't we? Because if we can, if we just sit, we can have random thoughts coming in. But actually, when we recognise that they are random we have the power to change that and turn it into something that we become conscious of and consciously then have our own thoughts. So we, we can do something about that. Of course. And when we find a random thought being persistent, that every time we are at idle or at leisure, and if this thought keeps on popping up, then if you're monitoring your thoughts, like you just said, which is the wise thing to do. And when you catch this persistent thing, then that's something that needs to be solved. That's your subconscious mind throwing up information. Um, and it's, you know, you should pay attention to it. And specifically what happens in your physical body when you're having that thought. Like where do you feel it in your body? That's really important. Whether that's a happy thought or a negative thought. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so you can link that mind and body. Um, mm -hmm. And, and that many people um, have dissociated as a, as a coping survival strategy mechanism from childhood. Um, and I know people who have taken their mind away from their body, it, as in dissociation. So we, what we do is we send our mind somewhere else so we don't have to think about what's going on in our physical body. And it is a learned survival mechanism. So as an adult, it really takes a lot of conscious energy to bring your mind back into your body and make that connection again, to reconnect, to find out and understand how your mind is affecting your body because so many people are dissociated. And I've had people say to me, look, I'm not stressed, but you've got migraine, you've got irritable mm -hmm. bowel, you haven't been to the toilet for 10 days. I, your body's saying you're stressed. <laughs> You might mm -hmm. not feel it, but that's that dissociation. So it is about totally understanding your thoughts and how they are interacting with your body. Absolutely. And, you know, this, I mean, yes, it's a survival mechanism from childhood and also society, um, our education system um, doesn't help at all because the way that the whole thing is set up um, it is completely divided. The mind, if there is, if people think of mind, then they think of like mental problems or mental uh, disorders. And then that goes to like the psychiatry department. If there's something wrong with your physical body, it goes to the hospital department. And if there's something wrong with your soul, it goes to the church or the religious department or the spiritual, yeah. into yeah. the spiritual basket. But actually they're all one unit. They're all you. And it gets harder and harder to to uh, to understand this, to come back to yourself. Um, I think age helps 
uh, definitely, you know, uh, when you're in your 20s and your 30s and life is so hectic, it's yeah. easier to continue the, dissoci the disassociation. But I think once you're once you cross your 40s, especially for women, as they approach menopause um, and the 50, it's it becomes like a huge milestone. And there's a lot of coming back to oneself. And then, then conversations like what you and I are having are very, very helpful. Um, and uh, to understand that people are supported, people are understood, and they're not, they're not mental <laughs> yeah. for thinking the way that we do and, and act and live, you and I. Yeah, and, and there's a lot of stigmatism around it as well, isn't there? You know, we're, we're, we're told to conform, we're, we're raised to conform, school puts us in a box, university continues that box, um, and, and we live our lives being in boxes. Um, and it's about stepping outside that box to find out who we are, what we like, what we want to do, rather than say, well, I'm in this box, therefore I should do this or I should do that. Well, actually, what do I want to do? It, you know and and who am I really um and follow your own passions because once you come back to yourself um your whole body harmon uh, harmonizes um and regulates better because you are being who you are meant to be absolutely but like you said that is it's it it it, it, it is it is a challenging journey um because it's not supported by the world the it, it sometimes i i think about it often that it how do people logically like how come no one ever thinks twice about the fact that we all have different thumbprints like even twins have different thumbprints and there's a million trillion people database all over the world and no one, you and it's all thing, thumbprint coded and everyone's okay understanding that we have different thumbprints, but the fact that we're, if, if we have the thumbprints, we have different everything as well. But yeah. nobody wants to encourage that. Nobody wants to encourage the individuality because honestly, it goes back to, you know, if we keep away from the whole, you know, conspiracy theory thing and we just talk practically that in the world, there is an economy. There is an economy that makes things go around we are encouraged to work in a certain way on the factory floor, like Pink Floyd sang about. And that's why we're conditioned to be a homogenized blob, not because uh, anyone cares about us. They have, uh, you know, they have make all these products. They want us to aspire to buy, buy them. And then we work to earn money to buy these products so that somebody up becomes very rich. So there are some really smart people out there who yeah. have the whole socio-economical political system going around. And that's all fine. I mean, that is part of evolution, you know, from the cavemen to days to today, you know, what, what our world is, it's fine. There's no judgment here. However, um, this is the reason why, Sarah, that we that we're not encouraged to be individuals. We're not encouraged to find our passion. We, if we are, uh, if we take a day out from our lives at any age, we're judged for being lazy, for not for performing. Other people don't have to judge us. It's already programmed in our own heads, yeah. Isn't right? It so the school does it and university does it. Then our, you know, our churches do it. Our parents do it. Our peers do it. There's just no escape. And it's only when, like you, you very correctly said, is when you feel that some that that there's a disharmony within you is when you start on your self awareness journey. And there are like lots of different ways to come back to yourself. And there's no one, there's no one solution for everybody. Some people can use yoga. Some people can use music, like I did, dancing. You anything that makes you feel good think positive thoughts and your body feels good that's your answer like your body never lies never not even if you get a physical injury like there's yeah. a reason that you you know hurt your thumb or there's a reason you stubbed your toe there will be and every time this happens to anyone around me and i and i and i say that oh are you is this what you're going through right now they're always surprised but that's how you know, the connection is established. Isn't it? Just, yeah. Just the how is individual, but the connection's there. Yes. 
Yeah, and I, and I believe as well that when we came into these physical bodies, um, we signed up to um, pain or health problems or something in our lives happening to remind us that we're not on the right path, um, that we need to change our path or that we're not following um, our, our hearts and souls purpose. So like I went through the suicidal depression which totally changed my course. And I thought I'd be a registered nurse forever until I um, became a pensioner. But in, I'm now no longer registered and I've come off on this health coach um, track and I feel totally aligned with it. But it, so it's like I had to go through that to totally shake me up and say, you know, Sarah, you're not on the right path. You, there's something uh, more that you need to be doing. And, um, and that's why I, I followed this health path um, after I'd healed myself. I thought, well, I can help others to do that. And I've never been better. Um, you know, all the, the health problems that I had have, have just melted away, have healed. And, um, and I feel aligned with what I'm doing. And it's people need to work out what it is that they like to do, love to do, want to do and follow that path even if sometimes you've got to take a side step but it's about working towards what they want to do rather than feel that they're put in a box or they have to do something for the status of the job or you know I've, I've been there I've been a cleaner when I was younger we had no money um, and and that just helped to pay the bills you, you've got to do what you've got to do I'm not saying it's um, it's easy, you know, nobody's spoon fed, um, you, but it's about working towards having that idea in the future and working towards it, even if sometimes you've got to take a side step. Um, but notice what's going on in your body. Why is it happening? What is the message behind it? And are you really following your soul's path and purpose? And if not, how do your symptoms relate to what it is that you want and where you want to go? Um, and what's keeping you stuck now? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, and I mean, the, the choice is ours. Always ours. Always. And with conversations like what we're having right now, it brings the awareness to the topic. The awareness gives you a choice. And, you know, this whole purpose of life thing isn't as easy as... Isn't as is isn't an easy thing to get to but it is the reason we're here it is the reason where we are born at this time in this body in this family there uh, in the families that we are born into there's a purpose behind the whole thing and because of the amount of conditioning like we like we spoke about earlier it is it is really difficult to step out of the box and then find your purpose and your alignment however it's it is totally doable. Like Sarah, you have done it. I've done it. We know plenty of people who have done it. Um, and the first step is to deal with the past. It is to heal from the past, any kind of like um, trauma. And trauma doesn't necessarily mean the big stuff. I mean, of course it does, but there's a lot of stuff beyond that that we don't think about because the big stuff is so big. But the little, little stuff, like the one hurtful comment that was said to you when you were five years old, that's frozen there, that, you know, everybody uses the word trigger nowadays. Do they really understand what that means? Oh, I'm triggered. No, <laughs> basically there is, you know, it, it, it's set somewhere in your past and that needs to be um, dealt with. And if you, you know, like you can go to therapy, like I said, there's all these different modalities that you can use to come back to yourself. You have to heal the past or find a way, a mechanism in which you're very, very aware of the present moment and you're able to let go of the past and really breathe through that in your, in your physical body. And then stop thinking about the future because that just causes stress and really live in the present moment and if you can do that then your purpose will slowly slowly come will become visible to you otherwise it won't because of the noise and the chaos of the past and the future you if you're constantly if your mind is living in either one of those states all the time then you can't find your purpose i mean i went through that and it was very very you know i 
I've been on my self-aware on this journey for like 10 years now. I had um, an understanding of what this was all about when I was 15 and I was completely unsupported. There weren't conversations like this at that time. There were no books there, um, you know, and so I pretty much like um, had lived in isolation for my whole life till now when it's all coming to light and stuff. And then I started my active self-awareness journey, like I said, 10 years ago. And I still have had no clue what my purpose was. And honestly, it's only after there's been like these huge shifts and I took up that death conversation thing. And oh my goodness, how my life has changed because now I know that's what I'm meant to do. I'm meant to talk about that. I'm meant to write about that. That's my mission on earth. But it wasn't something that I got up one day and said, oh, I figured it all out. It's when life shows you, your body starts showing you first, your mind, body, and soul is aligned. Everything falls into place. The universe delivers stuff that you hadn't, you like beyond what you had manifested. That's when you know you're on the right path. So that's what everyone has to look out for. Like, honestly, like manifestation, we manifest everything every minute of every day. When you're trying to reach somewhere and you get bigger and better, oh my goodness, that's just like the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and no, it, it it doesn't um it doesn't often show itself. You know, I had no idea that I would be in this role. As I said, I thought I was going to be a registered nurse until I retired. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about some days you'll do some things and it will really light you up and it will make you feel good. And that's the feeling that you need to hang on to and go, well, how can I do more of this? You know, what is it that's about this that's making me feel so good? And why do I like it? And, and what, how can I make this a part of my future? Whether it's as a job or as a hobby. Um, but, it, you know, you need to bring that in because when we do things for our soul, um, it really boosts our health and it, it, it impacts our, our um, aging process. It impacts our immune system, but it also ripples out as well to other people um, and they see it in us. And when we're doing what we want to do, where our soul is aligned, other people see that and, they're, and they're, they will then start doing things for themselves when they see us as a role model, if you like. You know, we're doing what we love to do and this is how it's impacting our life. Um, and other people will, will potentially want to be like that because so many people are doing jobs they don't want to do so they can pay the bills and buy stuff to potentially show to other people at the end of the day, it's just stuff. You know, let's just exactly. do what you want to do. Live a simple life, um, but live it for yourself. Don't live it for others. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's that. That's what I was talking about, this whole aspirational thing, because, you know, this is where, again, if I keep on going back to the death thing because it's so relevant um, that when you actually consider your own death and when you sit and you write your will and you look at the stuff that you have, when you start thinking about who's going to get what. That actually serves as a great reprioritization tool because you then you it really hits you that you can't take any of it with you. And the minute you realize that, I mean, I know it's common sense, but people don't process that. Not when they go out shopping to buy the next bag or the next Rolls Royce or the holiday home or whatever they're aspiring towards. And stuff is good. There's nothing wrong with stuff. Um, but to realize what stuff do you actually choose to buy because it brings you joy, not because you want to show the Joneses, like you were saying, right? And also when you talk, when you spoke about people, I wanted to add to that, that when you find your true joy, there'll be a lot of people who are who are not in alignment with your joy who will fall away from your life. Yeah. Relationships will change, whether that be your spouse, whether that be your friends and family or family. Um, that will that that's one thing that happens for sure. That and what is really important is not to get lost in that, not to feel triggered by that. Um, and to just let it go, like, it's okay, I'm evolving, so are my relationships. And then at that point, it is really, really important to find people who see your magic. 
and to to for you to build your own tribe so that you have conversations on your new truth and don't feel insane and that insanity comes when there's a misalignment when you are thinking and feeling a certain way but the people around you are telling you different so when i have conversations with people like you sarah when and you know this like because we we are energetically on the similar frequency vibration we come out of these conversations feeling energized feeling so good about ourselves we don't finish a conversation like this and say oh i'm so tired oh my god that was like an hour of my life no and th- this is when we know that we are with the right people when i need when i need to feel celebrated when i need to feel loved i just have to reach out to you and you have to just reach out to me because we found each other right yeah. and the other people you have surrounded yourself with your co-authors the people who were on the summit the uh, everyone listening to this podcast everybody coming on to this podcast they are now your tribe who validates and lifts you up further so you can actually shift and grow further and this is what true alignment looks like because you know when people are are listening to our conversation and if they're not on the self awareness journey then a lot of what we're talking about doesn't really make sense because we're talking different than they've been brought up to believe yeah and yeah. it's only through a big illness when they have to actually realize that medicine and doctors can only take them so far the body has to heal itself you have to rest that's when they suddenly realize okay i need to step out of the box yeah and don't you find that as well for the a lot of people um it's about being reactive to an illness or a diagnosis or a disease rather than thinking well what can i do now to prevent that in the future and i was part of that you know i was because of raised in the medical model you know from I'll just do what I want with my life and when I'm sick I'll go to the doctor and get a pill and that'll be better and you know and and just carry on doing what I want and I didn't do any disease awareness and prevention when I was growing up because it's like well the doctor's there with the pill that's mm-hmm. how I was raised that's you know there's a magic Absolutely. pill for it yep so as Same. I've healed and stepped out of that I now look at well how can i have a good life but also stay healthy and prevent disease in the future so i'm being proactive now whereas for the majority of my life i grew up reactive um and it is about making people aware that there's so much that we can do now to prevent disease now and in the future <clears throat> excuse me um and it's you know it doesn't have to be massive and we don't have to do everything all at once but if we start taking those baby steps towards the future that we want there's no reason why we can't have it but we have to make those conscious choices and make Absolutely. start making our our path towards what we want Absolutely Absolutely that is so true Yeah and and yeah you know a lot of people remain in the reactive just because and i think probably because like i was i was unaware you know when i was when i was younger even as a a, a younger adult uh, in my 20s and 30s i i was just living the life doing what i wanted but not really looking after myself mm-hmm. living a high life but but now i totally understand um and i've changed my life but it wasn't all in one go it was bit by bit by bit and that's all anybody can ever do you know just work baby steps towards your goal and when you look back you've come such a long way but it's only right. tiny little bits that you change every day or every week but we Absolutely. are totally totally in control and if we don't start making those changes and living that healthier life our body will manifest symptoms diseases to show us that we're out of alignment and that we're not living our higher purpose or we're not living um a healthy lifestyle and we only have to check in with our body and ask it you know what do you need how can i support you what why are you showing me this symptom where has it come from exactly i mean my um the tagline for my business uh, so it's my i i've called myself body speak and my tagline actually says that your body is always speaking to you all you have to do is listen now the the only issue with that is <laughs> 
why people need to make these smaller um, changes, like you said, is because once it actually comes into your body, onto your body, those my you have the, those thoughts and those feelings manifest themselves in your physical body, then it has to run its course. Which is why what you and I were speaking about earlier in the conversation, minding your thoughts is so important. Yeah. Like the thought that you have randomly at a certain point, the feeling that arises from it, where in your body do you feel that emotion needs to be dealt with then. That's part of this preemptive thing that you're talking about, right, Sarah? Yes. Um, because, you know, once your toe is stubbed, then it's stubbed and you're going to have to like wait till it, he, it it'll, then it takes time to heal. Yes. Yeah. The body um, is the last stop and that's why you need to take care of the signs in the beginning because the subconscious mind doesn't use, can't speak to you, right? There's a, there's a full separation between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. And all of this stuff happens at the subconscious um, level. And um, the, the body and your dreams are the two ways in which your subconscious mind tries to communicate. And if there's something really urgent, then the subconscious mind will make sure that you sit up and listen like what you were saying when you're stressed if you're stressed whether you realize it or not you know Sarah there's so many things in today's modern world that causes low level stress that people aren't even aware of like even if you live in a very busy district and there's a hum of traffic constantly in the background that is low level stress yeah People don't realize that. So, you know, I'm not surprised when people come uh, come to you and say, oh, I'm not stressed. The definition of stress yeah. is just related to work. That's the whole conditioning process, right? Yeah. Or, or family or friends yeah. or, or just things. But, but, you know, very few people are aware of noise is a stress factor. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and persistent noise. It doesn't have to be loud, like you say, traffic. Um, and, and it's about becoming aware of all these different things um, and, and the choices that we can make in our lives to reduce the stress um, and, and work on ourselves because not everybody's ready to work on themselves. Um, and going back to friends, as we work on ourselves and heal, some people in our lives will naturally fall away, but we have to be okay with that. You know, Mm -hmm. yes, it's a loss. It's a loss of a friendship in our life. But we're on different levels now as we we are healing and they're staying um, unhealed. We have to accept that that is a normal occurrence. But conversely, as as we heal, and like you alluded to, new people will come into our lives um, who align with the person that we are becoming as we are healing. So... On the one hand, we have lost, but on the other hand, we have gain. And I've found over the past maybe five years, I've gained so many more friends online as mm-hmm. I'm healing further, more and more people are coming to me and we are, like yourself, so aligned and, and on the same page. And, 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 and it's just fabulous to see that there are people out there wanting to do their own healing work and maybe not understanding how to do it, maybe just need a guiding hand, but they they have that want, that desire to make changes, which is brilliant, which is what we're all about, helping people to help themselves, you know, because we can't heal anybody. We can only guide them back inwards into themselves, and they do the healing themselves. Absolutely. Everyone has to do it themselves. And, and you know, even what we were talking about, the medical industry and going to the doctor for that magic pill, even there, the the misconception is, see, there's a difference between the medical uh, industry and the pharmaceutical industry. So the pharmaceutical industry is a business, yeah. whereas the medical industry um, started off trying to help people heal fix them basically but ultimately when they send you home they ask you to rest and your body does the healing ultimately so you know when you and i have conversations and people think that we're having all these woo conversations it's not because you know when you break a bone you have to rest and no medicine in the world is healing your bone it is you who is healing your bone as you're resting and recuperating but somehow this whole um this whole 
mass hypnosis, almost conditioning to be to believe that conversations like you and I are having are are not practical, that they are, like I said, woo. That is something, you know, so we've become a divided camp where yeah. in either you're here where you're talking about naturopathy and healing yourself and all oh, yoga and meditation. And then you have the other people, the people who are not here saying, oh, that's not for me. And then all they're doing is living a highly stressed life. The point is that there is a balance to this. Nobody's saying that the medical system's wrong. Once upon a time, you know, there was a lot of like research that went into figuring out how the human body works and it, it medical uh, science has made great progress. That's all fantastic. I only wish for a world where the three will be united and that for being either on the soul camp, which is where we are, or the body camp, which is where the doctors are, that has to, if that changes, that 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 day I'll be like the happiest. And that's yeah. all that you and I are talking about. We're talking about balance. We're talking about quality living in the present moment. We're talking about mindfulness. None of this is woo. Yeah. Of course, you can enhance your experience with candles and incense and crystals, but the actual experience is learning to be present with your thoughts, your feelings, and your emotions, taking a hundred percent self-responsibility for every thought, for every emotion. And that is what creates miracles. Yes, it is. Absolutely. And we are miracles in ourselves. Oh, we are. Absolutely. The we body. Oh my goodness. What a miracle. What a miracle. Absolutely. Oh, I think that's a lovely place to um, bring this conversation to an end. But before I let you go, Natasha, would you like to share one small thing that somebody listening today could do to help themselves on their own healing journey? So I think I'll stick with the being present um, without um, any labels that can make like I, I mentioned mindfulness, but if we take away that word and we just talk about being fully present in the, in the present moment and really accepting whatever is happening to us in that moment, whether that be a thought, a feeling, a circumstance that you are in in your life, to really accept that it is what it is, what you said at the beginning of the conversation, it is what it is. And to really take that phrase and consider it sacred. It, they're not just words, they're very, very, very powerful. They allow us to accept what is happening and surrender to what is. And surrender to me isn't a giving up, it's a giving in. It's a giving in into the flow of life, the flow of experience, it's not a fight. Survival isn't a fight. It's a flow. It's a state of joy. It's a state of gratitude that we need to celebrate every single day for being alive and being alive right now. So acceptance, surrender, joy, and gratitude. These four words make my sentence. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. And so powerful as well. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so, Natasha, where can people find you? So the best way to find me, honestly, is Instagram. Um, it, my handle is bodyspeak.in on Instagram because there's a lot of things that are evolving for me. And I do keep it updated in terms of, like, my next book or, you know, I'm going to be doing uh, master classes and stuff soon eventually i don't know so instagram's the best way Wonderful. and of course uh, like i said i'd love to give your um the listeners to this episode um the uh, my chapter from the book wealth codes if they were if they email me if you can just put those in the show notes please just email me at natasha mind bodyspeak.com and in the subject you put um heal wc11 then I'll know they're your listeners and I will send them a copy of my chapter. Wonderful. Thank you so much, for Natasha. Thank you for being on the show. 
Thank you for having me, Sarah. Thank you so much.